Good morning. We're speaking to Azarul Bukhari this morning for Free Pluck Friday, and he runs Care Shelter KL. Thank you so much, Azarul, for speaking to us on Light Breakfast. Right, guys. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Now, before we move on to what you're doing right now, like what were you working as before you opened your own capsule hotel? Okay, so basically, my background is uh, business. Um, um, when I was 19, I basically founded, co-founded, and also was the managing director of a recording studio in SSUPJ. Wow! Right. Yeah, so entrepreneurship has been like what I I've been doing. For, It's been in your blood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My dad is in, I guess, entrepreneurship as well, business. What does your dad do? Um, well, um, my dad, my family. They have like a construction and development company. Right, right. Okay. So you didn't you you decided to go into music first? Yeah, I grew up on on music pretty much. And okay. Like, yeah. So what what inspired you then to suddenly want to own your own capsule hostel? Okay, so in 2018, late 2018, I stayed in Penang for about uh, four months or so. Um, well, while I was there, I pretty much stayed at hostels because there are lots of hostels in Georgetown. And I don't know, for some reason, an opportunity came and just decided to open up my own hostel. When you were in Penang, was it like... Uh... A research trip? Why stay there for, for work? work? Yeah, I was I was there because I applied for this uh, photography um, grant program. So I was pretty much there for that reason. Right. So you didn't want to rent an apartment or anything. Yeah, it was it was quite convenient to stay at um, the hostels because they were located like right at the center of Georgetown. Okay, yeah. so the gallery capsule is a capsule hostel, meaning mm-hmm. that they have these little bunks for beds and all that cubicles, right? Yes, yes. Why? What inspired you to want to build these Japanese-styled capsules for your hostel instead of just the regular, you know, bunk beds and all that? Okay, so when I when I was staying at the hostels in Penang, uh, they pretty much had like the like conventional. Um, Bunk beds, right? Um, so, what uh, I I experienced when I stayed at those hostels was they were like noisy at night, mm. and people would come in and out like at any time during the day, even at night, because they would leave for their flight or something at three in the morning, mm. and it's loud, and you don't have like privacy or whatever. Yeah. So I decided to kind of just go with this design instead because once you're in the capsule um, then like people wouldn't be able to see what's going on inside and you wouldn't be able to like hear what's going on outside mm. so it's more private in that sense yeah. they are little own cubicle yeah it's okay. kind of like um, you know most people who stay at hostels or capsule hotels they they're just there to sleep they're not there to kind of just you know mingle Yeah, they do mingle, but then when they're in their bed, they they're just there to sleep. Mm, that's true. I mean, that's why you book hostels sometimes as well. You just want a place to sleep, right? Yeah, because you're out like as a as a backpacker or as a tourist, you would be out most of the time during the day, and you would just go back to sleep. All right. So, so you you got the opportunity to. Did you rent this place or did you buy over this building? Um, okay, so this this uh, hostel, the the property is rented, but then um, we custom built each capsule. Ah, okay. Yeah. So you did put in quite a lot of money and effort into this. Quite quite a lot, quite a lot of money, and like I've spent pretty much the the last two years. Trying to, you know, bring this place. Okay, so yeah. tell us like, more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tell us more about the gallery capsule. When did you officially open? Okay, so um, 
basically um, uh, we started the lease on this property um, in January 2019 okay and then uh, it took us about four months to basically build everything because the capsules are custom built out of mm-hmm. concrete and like each brick within um, the capsules were hand carried up here because there's no like there's no elevator uh, or anything so it took about four months to complete that once that was finished um, we pretty much launched this place in June I think so from June 2019 to I guess December 2019 it was going well you know we welcomed a lot of guests like local and international guests um, but then the pandemic hit mm. right and then um, basically like we had the MCO and everything mm. um, and no tourists were allowed to come in so yeah pretty much there's there has been no guests Instead. Are you in this business on your own, or do you have partners? I'm I'm on my own over here. Oh, you finance wow. is on your own, huh? You finance uh, yeah, everything. I, on your I, own. I got I got people to chip in in terms of uh, investing in this space. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So at that point, when when you started in June, what did you enjoy most about running a hostel? Well, for me, I think. <clears throat> Because the people that came and stayed over here were around my age group, you know. Um, I pretty much welcomed all the guests as friends, mm. and I, I grew up in an in, in, in an in an international community because I grew up abroad and stuff. So it was it was just kind of like an extension of my my life. Which they made a lot of friends and a lot, a lot of new of friends. friends. Yeah, a lot of a lot of friends. So that that was fun. That was okay. pretty much fun. You don't mind me asking, Azrul, how old are you? I'm um, 26. Oh, a young entrepreneur. Pretty young. <laughs> but what were some of the challenges, though, in the beginning of running a a capsule hostel? Um, okay, I would say, um, you know. I've never run this kind of business before where you have to interact with like random people mm. right and some of them can be a little bit out of what you expect <laughs> what do you mean what I mean by that is like some of them can be like crazy oh <laughs> like, can you tell us a, a story maybe of, of a crazy guest <laughs> Wait, when you mean crazy, it means like medically. Um, I don't know how to. I don't know. I don't know how to like explain it. Right. But, but they're just know, out of whack. Yeah, like you know how we are. Like we have our way of living over here. Some of them come from like on the other side of the world or something mm. like that. Oh, I see. And they don't really. I don't know. They they're just very they they're insistent uh, with their way of life. Okay. So, as much as you try to be like diplomatic or whatever with them, they kind of insist. Right. Can you share us share with us a story of something that really Ooh. gave you a headache? <laughs> a well, guest who gave you a headache. I guess. Um, I guess I, I probably sh- wouldn't share the the most controversial one because there's okay. one that's like super controversial because it involves religion and stuff like oh, that. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right then. But, Let's go with the less controversial but, one. Yeah. So, so there was <laughs> but this, equally as crazy. Like there was this one guest. Um, he is from... I'm not sure where he was from, but he's like from the Middle East or something like mm-hmm. that. He left his country because he didn't want to stay with his family. So he had like psychological issues. Mm-hmm. And he stayed over here for about uh, a month. And... I, I guess in the common areas in the common area he would come and like cry or something like that cry cry and speak okay. to himself really yep you know crazy, crazy did he freak out the other guests um no no because I would go and talk to him and tell him to calm down 
or go out for a walk or something like that. Like that's my rule over here. I'm kind of like the referee or captain in this case. Counselor. Yeah, <laughs> that person. So I've stayed in ho- host. Uh, I've stayed in hostels on, on my travels before, and there are always certain rules to follow. Don't be too noisy. Keep the yeah. cleanliness and everything. Anyone break any rules at your place? Um, not really, not really. I would prob. I would. I would. I would go and talk to them before they do that. So you you must be very busy when you had the hotel. So you were there the whole entire time. Yes, pretty much. What was your schedule like when when you were running the hotel? Um, well, oh, you stayed there as well. I I stay here as well because I, I built my own spot somewhere in the hostel. Right. So it's easy for me to kind of just take care of everything. So, um, were you a one man show? Did you have like housekeeping staff or uh, front I desk did, staff? I did. I did. Okay. Because we we basically have uh, this volunteering program for tourists, right? Or not tourists, but travelers, pretty much. Um, there, there's this one uh, website called Workaway, mm. where like backpackers or travelers can volunteer to work at a property and get uh, to stay there for free. Ah, right, right, okay. Okay. So we did that, and then those people would handle all the smaller things, you know, like cleaning. Right. So you started that. early 2019, and then. Then the MCO hit, right? Were you? Because it usually takes a while before you get profitable. Were you breaking even, or did you make some good money at some point? Um, actually, we didn't really have we we didn't have enough time to even establish ourselves. Yeah. You know that's why that's why you you probably couldn't find us on on the internet. Uh, this space was formerly known as Bed Max Hostel. Right. And then um. I guess I decided to turn it, uh, change the name to like the gallery capsule. So we didn't really have, we didn't really have the opportunity to like establish ourselves online and all that. Yeah, yeah. Like, we were on like Booking.com, Agoda, and all that, but we didn't really get the opportunity to build like a presence. You know? Yeah, or presence. market yourself out there. Yeah, because yeah. you were so busy, business was coming in, and yeah. then. Before you even wanted to get off the ground, then suddenly this pandemic hits, right? Right, that's right. So, what happened to the hostel during the pandemic? Um, it's been it's been shut off. We're off like Booking. dot com. We're off Agoda and all that. Um, and I guess the place was on the verge of being relinquished back to the owner. Right. Uh, but then. Because we put so much money and I've put so much time into this place, and the, the facility is here, you know, ready to be used. Um, an idea came. That's that's how I came up with the idea of turning it into a shelter. Okay. Yeah. Was there a particular case or story which sort of inspired you to want to make your capsule hotel a shelter? Um. Okay. So. Not really. It was just kind of like a problem-solving idea, because like if you think about it, right now a lot of people are going through like financial struggles, right? And after talking to people within the NGO communities, mm-hmm. like the leaders of the communities, they tell me that there are lots of cases of people being evicted from their houses because they can't pay rent, mm-hmm. and Uh, they also t- told me that um, there are lots of cases where uh, people from out of state come into KL to basically deal with like medical treatments and stuff, and their families, family members, uh, would have to find an, uh, a separate place for them to stay at, right? So, uh, I guess I just thought it'd be great to turn this place into a shelter where people can come in and stay temporarily. Yeah. What are you hoping to achieve with Care Shelter KL? Well, I guess there are there's. Is this a temporary solution, or do you think you want to make this like you know, okay. your capsule hostel into a a permanent shelter? So I was I was talking about this specific question yesterday with um, 
NGO hub. I'm not sure if you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. with yeah. Wahoo, is it? So I'm I'm working I'm working with NGO hub to basically like crowdfund this project, right? And they asked me the same question yesterday, and I basically said uh, it depends if this project is like super successful in terms of its function, then I don't mind like turning this place into a shelter, full-time shelter. Yeah. But if you make it into a full-time shelter, yeah. I mean, once a business, once a shelter, the business makes you profits and money, aren't you hoping to turn it back into a profitable business at some point? Uh, what was What was it? Because I mean, if if this is very successful as a shelter, yeah, and then you want to continue it, but don't you, like, because at a hotel you make profit, yep, right. As a shelter, you probably won't. Hmm. So, aren't you concerned about that? Um, I don't know. I haven't really figured that part out yet. But but I guess if it helps people, right? Why not? Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. So, cause cause I'm thinking. Once this whole pandemic blows over and people start visiting again, yeah. you might wanna, you know, make it back into a hostel. The, the, the what you intended to do in the first place. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see because that's a long way from now. Like yeah, the, because we don't know when this pandemic will end, right? right? Yeah, the tour, the tourism industry is probably not gonna be recovering within the next few years. Like. Yeah. Because this is such a big global issue, right? Mm-hmm. It's a big global issue, and I guess based on where we are now, like globally, there's still a long way to go. You know, still a long way to go. So, I guess right now, the focus is just to turn this place into a shelter so that it it can be used, it can help people. This is what it what the what I guess the best use for it right now. Okay. And the owners of the building, is, they're okay with that. Yeah, they're completely okay with it. I have, I have a really cool landlord. Yeah. Do, um, have you started receiving any guests, as in for the shelter? Not yet, because Not yet. we're we're still in the process of like setting up the shelter. Okay. Yeah. What will be different, uh, with the shelter, as compared to what you have built for the capsule hostel? Um, okay, the difference is people are going to be staying here for free. Right. Yeah. They will still be staying in the capsules, so you won't you won't change the layout. The layout or yeah. Layout is pretty much going to be the same. They're going to be staying here for for free. Um, and then another thing is I'm going to be working with like NGOs to build like programs to help these people. I guess either develop themselves or stabilize themselves. Mm. You know, because uh, like for example, downstairs we have a DBKL's community learning center. Mm-hmm. So say if we have um, like single mothers or kids, like you know, kids right staying here, then we might organize like a like a learning education thing downstairs yeah 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 okay so how can someone who who has been left homeless apply to stay at care shelter and how long can they stay for okay so as of now the plan is to get the ngos to refer cases to us mm. so through these ngos um i mean they're tapped into the communities, right? So, people within their community would go and talk to the leaders of the NGOs and tell them about their issues. Like, for example, they might not have a place to stay or etc. And what the NGOs will do is they'll contact uh, the shelter Mm -hmm. and then we'll just tell them if there's like space for these people. And we'll also have a criteria for people who are eligible to stay here. Okay. How so you will space? vet through. Yeah. yeah. How much space do you have, actually? Okay, so over here we have 28 capsules. Yeah. Okay. Not not that many. Very manageable. Okay. Yeah. Not that many. It's like super... 
I guess manageable. Yeah. For myself. Are you setting trying to set a max for how long they can stay though? I mean, like maybe a month or maybe two? maybe maybe like I guess depends on the case, right? But um, I guess for now, in maybe like three months max. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Right. But are you are you thinking of providing them with like food and basic necessities as well? Yes. Uh, when it comes to that, we're gonna work with uh, the NGOs. Mm. To kind of build like a full program. Okay. So, but I mean, as an entrepreneur, how are you going to make some money out of this? I haven't. Re- <laughs> I haven't really figured that part out yet. Yeah. Because yeah. right now, to me, it's not really about like making profit. Mm. It's just about. Surviving, I guess. Yeah. You know? And utilizing the space to its fullest. Exactly. This space, mm. is, this space to me is kind of like my own baby, so mm. I don't want to lose it. So I guess my focus is on that first, and then we'll see where it goes after that. But I mean, you still have to pay the lease, right? So, aren't you struggling to, <laughs> to make ends meet if that's the case? Okay, so uh, this is why we're working with um, you know NGO Hub because we we plan to basically crowdfund this entire project. Mm. Yep. So it's a but it's so it's going to be a constant thing that you're constantly going to need funding. You're constantly going to need to pay the lease, pay for food, pay to take care of these people, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, how are you going to do this crowdfunding? Thing. Like, what can us regular Malaysians do to help this project of yours? All right. So, if you go on Google or the internet, right, um, you can search Care Shelter KL, and then um, if you go on NGO Hub's website, we have a campaign uh, right now that's live that people can go and read up and also contribute. Okay. So people can go on NGO Hub, search Care Shelter KL, and then you can read up on what this whole project is about and pretty much like contribute. Aren't you concerned about uh, the the virus? I mean, the disease. How are you gonna? Yeah. You gonna Got it. constantly Got it. be cleaning <laughs> and then worried about your guests and stuff? That's that's a really good question. That's a really good question. So uh, part of the procedure of admitting people into this whole program is they'll have to get COVID tested mm. and we're pretty much working with one of the hospitals nearby um, you know hopefully they'll they'll sponsor because it's still in progress yeah. hopefully they will sponsor the COVID test for the beneficiaries of the program pro- project well we hope that this project will take off and, and you'll be able to help a lot of um, people who are left shelterless i guess uh because of this pandemic um well azrul because you're doing such a great job and you're trying to make a difference in other people's lives we've uh, oh, oh oh wait 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 <laughs> we're gonna play we actually recorded uh an ad for you for oh, your really? project for care right. shelter kl and sure. we're gonna play you the ad right now sure, sure yeah have a listen to this when is a hotel not a hotel? I don't know. When it's been converted to house the less fortunate. That's a great cause, but is there such a place? There is. The Care Shelter KL is a converted capsule hotel in the heart of Kuala Lumpur in the Chowkit district, providing temporary accommodation to people in need of shelter or are financially affected by this pandemic. So if you're in desperate need of a place to stay or if you know someone who does, contact Azaro Bukhari at 011 123 Care Shelter Kuala Lumpur. Just know you're not alone. Yeah. Cause I'm going to make this place your home. Epic. <laughs> That's epic. <laughs> That's awesome, guys. <laughs> Sounds really so, good. Yeah, so that is your radio ad for Care Shelter KL. Um, and hopefully, yeah. So do you guys... The project will... You sorry? You guys air that. We will air that we, on radio. We're going to air that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 
It's Thank called a free plug, so that's your free plug. Yeah. Expect tons of calls. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We should have put a website in as well, right? Where can we go to? Like, if if we know someone in need of a shelter, uh-huh. where can which website can we go to? Okay. Besides calling you directly. <laughs> okay. So uh, when it comes to that, uh, we are setting up a website, but uh, it's not on yet. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'll keep you updated on that. All right. So maybe just go to NGO Hub for now. Yeah, yeah, NGO Hub for now. All right, and okay. call you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, you have a very rem- uh, a good. You have a very nice number as well, so people remember it. <laughs> thank well, thank you so much, Azrul, for speaking to us, and all the best with this project. I think it's great that you know making full use of your capsule hostel to help those in need. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for having me on the show.